Hey everybody, I do that little chair hop each time. Um, I just wanted to do a brief video on reliability, um, particularly uh, temporal stability, which we, you're commonly going to see pre-test, post-test. And I've got a really fancy graphic to show you at the end, so hang in there. Um, uh, as I'm kind of talking through these concepts, maybe the graphic that I will show will help. But just to be aware that there's, we want to understand the reliability of a test or assessment instrument to determine if it is consistent, if it's measuring consistently over time, and time is temporal stability. And so often we see this in pre-post. So we may have somebody come in at screening, a client come in, and um, we give them a depression instrument, maybe the PHQ-9 or a Beck depression inventory or what have you. And then a week or two later, we give them the same test and we want to see if there's been improvement. Okay. And, um, and so uh, now with depression, clearly, hopefully we're going to see some improvement and so forth. And we can talk with the client to understand the reliability. Yes, we're going to want to give this to a big sample, a representative sample at time one and then give it to that exact same sample, if at all possible, and there's statistical procedures for if somebody doesn't show or if it's sick that day, but that same sample, the exact same test at week two. So with pre-post, oftentimes you'll see that it's given one week apart, okay? So to help determine temporal stability. Now, one of the biggest sources of error or that can, re um, can reduce reliability is um, vague questions that could be read one way at one sitting, and then the next time you take the test a week later, you read it and interpret that question differently. So vague questions can be a big source of error that can reduce uh, the, um, the uh, strength of our reliability. Now, I'm gonna show you this, but if we give this to a large representative sample, a depression inventory at week one, and then at week two, the same sample we give that. And then we're going to correlate those scores. We're going to use a correlation analysis to correlate those scales to get us our R uh, value, okay? The little R value our, uh, to, to give us that correlation. And what we know is that a, a, an R value of plus or minus um, zero to three would be little, little correlation to very, very small, okay? Um, between a plus or minus of 0.4 to 0.6 would be kind of small to moderate correlation. And then 0.7 to 1.0, plus or minus 0.7 to 1.0, would be kind of moderate to strong. Okay, We, we like to see 0.8 or higher, uh, and clearly with some you know, large standardized tests, intelligence tests and so forth, you want to see uh, that this is uh, consistent. Um, clearly with things like depression that can change in a week's amount of time. We can feel better We can and so forth. So that's what we're looking for with reliability. There's other videos uh, talking about other ways of determining. So temporal stability is what we just talked about and typically with a pre-post, but there's also um, internal consistency, which can be done with split half and also inner item consistency. And I talk about that in another video, but just so that I can show you this and I'm going to make sure that this is actually showing up. I'm going to stand back here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we're not going too long on this, but just to show you uh, kind of what we were talking about, just a little graphic. I'm not sure if that would be helpful. Um, I was having a little difficult time with uh, trying to get quick time and drawing and all that at the same time. So let me know questions and we will talk to you soon.